All right, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about muffling your drums. So all drums naturally have a certain amount of ring to them. They sustain after you hit them. And a lot of times we actually want that ring. We like that sustain, but a lot of times we don't want that. So we need to dry out the drum, as we say, by using some form of muffling to make it drier, to make it have less ring or less sustain. So there's a lot of different ways to do this and I'm gonna talk about them. So let's use this snare drum as an example to start. And right now this drum, it has no muffling. It has a, a two-ply coated head on it which is generally pretty ringy without muffling. Um, certainly not the ringiest, but it is fairly ringy. So if I hit it, you can hear that it has a ring or sustain to it. And if I hit it closer to the edge, it gets even ringier. Right? So. Sometimes we might not want that. Um, an example of when we might not want that is if we were recording, for example, and we had a, a close microphone here. That microphone's gonna pick up all that ring because it's so close to the actual drum. And on the actual recording, it's just gonna be way too much ring and we don't necessarily want that. So that would be an instance where we don't want that ring. Um, also, if we were playing um, like super low volume and sort of uh, maybe kick, snare, beat oriented type of music, um, we wouldn't really want that ring there either because it's gonna be obvious and it's not gonna sound so nice. It has sort of a nasty quality to it when you play it at low volume. And um, I should note that anytime you uh, muffle a drum to uh, dry it out, you also lose volume. So in this example of a low volume situation where you don't want the ring, that's not a problem. We can muffle this drum quite a bit and we're actually doing ourselves a favor because we're taking out that ugly ring and we're also making the drum a little bit quieter. So you could actually hit it a little bit harder if you wanted to, and it's not gonna be crazy loud. Um, but let's say we're doing some sort of musical thing that needs to be really loud and we need as much volume as possible from our drums. That's a situation where we probably don't wanna muffle that much because we're gonna be making our lives more difficult if we do that, because muffling uh, makes the drums a little bit quieter, okay? So, all right, so let's say we're gonna dry out this drum a little bit. Um, here are some options. Uh, on the market, you can buy these little jelly, rubbery jelly sticky discs <laughs> um, commonly referred to as moon gel. Now these aren't moon gel, this is made by a different company and they're clear. The actual moon gel, um, it's another brand and they're blue usually and they're square I think a lot of times. But it's all kind of the same stuff and you basically just you know grab whatever size you want. This one comes in different sizes and you just stick it on the drum head. So like that's a pretty small amount, so let me make it a little more drastic. I'll put on one of these big ones, and uh, we can hear the difference. So before, and now with a big moon gel on it, It's way drier, right? We're still hearing a little bit of ring, but that ring is actually, it's sympathetic vibrations coming off the tom-toms and the cymbals to some degree. Um, there's almost no ring actually now coming from this snare drum. So with the muffling, without the muffling. 
So big difference, right? So um, this sort of method applies to basically all the drums except the kick drum. The kick drum, we usually um, put things inside of it to dry it out, like a towel or a pillow or a blanket or something like that. Uh, there's also stuff on the market you can buy to put inside your kick drum to dry it out. But um, this video I'm really talking about like snare, toms, um, it's all kind of the same approach. So like uh, this tom over here, for example, um, without any muffling, it has a nice long sustain to it, but with a, a big moon gel on it, It's a little bit shorter. It's not that drastic as when we put it on the snare drum, but it is a little bit shorter and it's a little bit cleaner. So, you know, the, the drums are gonna respond to muffling in different ways, and it depends kind of where they're tuned and what type of head they have on them. But anyways, um, so moon gel type thing. I, um, to be honest, I sort of avoided moon gel type stuff for a long time, and then, I finally bought some and it's like, man, this is the best stuff ever because it's, it's just super easy. It comes in a little case, you stick on what size you need, it's super adjustable, peel it on, pull it off, like whatever. Super easy and it always sounds really good actually um, to my ears. So, but let's say you don't have some moon gel and you want to do things a little bit more DIY style. So. There's always tape. Now, um, this is like exterior grade masking tape. So we can stick it on the heads and as long as it doesn't stay on there for a super long time, um, it's not gonna leave any residue if you pull it off, which is um, what we want. Like if you were to use duct tape, for example, that would be a really bad choice because you pull it off and it leaves a sticky mess. Um, probably the same electrical tape would do that as well, and some other tapes would do that. Um, there is a tape called gaffer's tape, which they use to mark stages in like theater productions. And that tape works really well. Um, it's probably, it's a little better than this, but it's, um, it's like hard to come by. It's like special order stuff and it's pretty expensive. So I just use exterior grade masking tape and it works well. So, if you just wanted a little bit of muffling, you could just use just the tape. And so, let me pull off just a little piece here, and we'll get the before. And then with the tape, So that's just a little bit of muffling. It made it a little cleaner. It wasn't quite as ugly, but it still had that ring. So if you want just a little muffling, just a little piece of tape or maybe a couple little pieces of tape, that's all you need. But if you want a little bit more, what I usually do is I make like a, like almost like a Band-Aid, if you will. And actually I have used Band-Aids before and they also work but I usually use um, tape and then like like one square of toilet paper, uh, paper towels work, anything like that. And I just fold it up and do a little rectangle like that. And then I grab a piece of tape and I make like this little band-aid type thing. And then I tape it on. So let's get the before. And then with the tape band-aid style. Ah, see that's pretty nice, right? <clears throat> that's kind of closer to what we got when we put the moon gel on there. And um, so yeah, if I don't have the moon gel on me, this is usually my go-to. It generally always sounds good, and it's cheap, and it and it works. So, yeah, that sounds really nice. Um, 
What if I put it on this tom over here? Yeah, so it's kind of like the moon gel, right? On the tom, it, it wasn't that drastic, just a little bit cleaner, but on the snare, it was pretty drastic, sounded great. So, um, if you need more, you just make more of these little band-aids with tape and toilet paper, and you just stick them around somewhere on the drum where they're out of your way. I should also mention, um, obviously, the bigger the piece, the more muffling it's going to be, but also... Um, the closer to the center of the drum you stick it is going to muffle the drum more. So obviously, like, we don't want it to be in our way when we're trying to play the drum. But even the difference between, say, putting it, like, way out on the edge, like that, and moving it in maybe just a little bit more, like, that makes a pretty big difference, actually. So, um, things to keep in mind. Um, and of course that would go for any type of muffling moon gel the tape band-aids um, other things you know that that makes a difference where it is on the head okay so um, that was two options now you could also use um, like uh, a ring <laughs> now this is one that I made uh, you can buy these on the market. I think they call them zero rings, maybe. I don't know. I've never really actually bought them. I make my own. I, I cut a plastic ring out of an old drum head, and then I glued uh, fleece fabric to the other side. Um, the ones on the market don't have the fleece, and I find that I get a little bit of a buzz from them which annoys me <laughs> so I glue fleece to ones that I make and then it's nice and clean and you don't get any buzz from it so um, and then yeah it's just like this you just throw it on the drum it's sized to each drum and uh, these work well so before and after right so super dry that's even drier than the moon gel or the band-aid tape scenario um, so these work well uh, to be honest um, a lot of times it's too dry for me so um, I don't always use these and you can't really adjust them it's like it's either off or it's on, and you can't move it around, and you can't like put just part of it on there. So it's either off or it's on, and when it's on, if that's the amount of muffling you want, great. Um, but if it's too much, then you should probably use moon gel or tape and toilet paper or whatever. And um, I'll also say that, you know, sometimes like in the heat of the moment, a stick will get caught under there and then it gets all tangled up and it flies out and I can't reach it during the middle of the song and um, <laughs> uh, especially tricky if you're like playing with brushes and now you have this tiny little spot to work with so I'm you know I'm not the hugest fan of this method but obviously you know I've made my own here and I use them under certain situations uh, okay oh I also have one here just for comparison, this is for a 10. So this, this tom, here's a 10. Now this tom, uh, even though it has the same, ten, uh, same heads and similar tuning as this tom, these are just really cheap drums and this drum actually doesn't even ring that much. Like the ring that we're hearing is actually coming from the snare and the 12 over here. This drum's already pretty dry, but um, as a comparison, so before and after. So, pretty drastic, actually. Even the, though the drum didn't have much ring to begin with, now it's like, has no ring. It's just super dry.
right? So pretty interesting, right? These are handy, but um, not the most versatile option. Uh, another option. Dish towel. So I always keep a few dish towels around and simple, you just throw it over the top of the drum, right? So before and after. Crazy dry. Now this is even drier than the ring that we just looked at. This is like as dry as it gets. So basically for me, this is, um, it's almost like a special effect. If I just want super dead dry snare sound or whatever sound, uh, I'll throw the dish towel over. Or if I'm like crazy low volume, um, playing kick snare beat type stuff and I have to be really, really quiet, but you're playing like rock songs, which, which this actually happens in the real world. Um, I'll throw the towel on like that and I'll, I've done entire gigs with a towel on my snare drum and it works good. Sometimes it starts to move around so you gotta kind of, sometimes I'll tape it, I'll actually tape it to the snare drum so it won't fall off. But, um, you know, this works well to get super dry thing. And, you know, you could also throw it on your toms. So that's usually why I have more than one kicking around. Sometimes I'll put a towel on every single drum to just get this super dry, um, dead, like tribal kind of kit sound. <laughs> There's like nothing there, right? It's just super dry. Okay, so, all right, um, I think that about does it. Basic muffling options. So I think the important thing to take away from this is that uh, sometimes you want the ring. Sometimes you want the ring. It's good to have drums that have a lot of ring to them because if you're in a loud volume situation and you need to project and the ring isn't going to be a problem, then that's what you want. But um, a lot of times, you might not want that, and then you're going to have to do a certain amount of muffling. And it changes all the time, depending on the musical situation you're in, uh, maybe the type of music you're playing to get a certain sound. Um, but these things are all factors. All right, I'm going to stop rambling now. That was muffling. See you in the next video. Thanks.